We're super excited to be here. Um, now, before we get started, um, allow us to introduce ourselves. So my name is Adriana Vilela, and I am a CNCF ambassador. I'm a HashiCorp ambassador, blogger, podcaster. By day, I work at ServiceNow Cloud Observability, the artist formerly known as Lightstep. Um, and I spend most of my time doing open telemetry work. Reese and I actually work together in the open telemetry and user working group, soon to be SIG. Super excited. Um, and uh, by night, I like to climb walls and completely unrelated, I'm a huge fan of capybaras. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Reese Lee. I'm a senior developer relations engineer at New Relic. As Adriana mentioned, we work together on the Open Telemetry End User Working Group, um, where we're focused on connecting end users to each other through enablement content as well as events and facilitating a feedback loop with project maintainers um, and end users to help improve the project as well as drive adoption. Um, I guess my fun fact is I like anything spooky and paranormal. Ooh. So credit for the idea for this talk actually goes to our lovely MC, Austin Parker. Um, they had written up a Today I Learned type post um, where they discussed a conversation that they had about, um, with someone about how open telemetry deals with air recording, which made us wonder, oh, dude, where's my air? Where's my air, dude? So how does OpenTelemetry handle errors? And what options do you have for recording errors using OpenTelemetry? This is what we're going to answer for you today in our session. We're going to first set the stage with some background. Then we're going to get into how errors are represented and handled in OpenTelemetry. We'll then give you a demo um, on how the same OpenTelemetry instrumented error is represented in a few different backends, um, and we'll talk about why that matters for you as an end user. And finally, we will do a quick wrap up. So Adriana is going to set the stage for us. Shall yes. Before we talk about all this lovely stuff, let's do a little bit of background. So here's the deal. So happens that different languages approach errors and exceptions in different ways. So for example, Go doesn't really have the concept of exceptions. But then languages like Java and Python have things like mechanisms for catching and throwing exceptions, which is awesome. But what happens when you're in a situation where you have an app that's made up of multiple microservices written in different languages, and we're trying to do the observability thing? Well, we need a, you know, a standardized way for capturing our telemetry, and that includes a standardized way for capturing our errors. So what do we do in that case when we can't even agree on you know, how we're handling errors in different languages? And of course, the answer is open telemetry to the rescue, our good friend, and which leads me to the open telemetry refresher, which I'm sure everyone here is familiar with it. So this will be a very quick refresher. So open telemetry, CNCF project, open source, vendor neutral, allows us to generate, ingest, process, and export telemetry data to one or more observability backends for analysis and interpretation. Awesome. So back to errors. Well, we talk about errors, we talk about exceptions, but what is the difference between the two? Now, there are different definitions of errors and exceptions. Um, and we can probably argue all day about this, but we've come across uh, definitions for errors and exceptions that we particularly like, so these will be uh, the basis for our talk here. Note that this is, uh, these are definitions for errors and exceptions within the context of technology purely and not, so, like, but not, not, in, not necessarily in the context of open telemetry. So what is an error? An error is an unexpected issue in a program that hinders it's execution. So an error can be something like a compile time error. You forgot parentheses on an if statement. Maybe you forgot curly braces. Maybe you forgot a semicolon. Or it can be uh, something like a logic error. The program is executing, sure, but it's not doing what you're expecting it to do. Then we have exceptions. An exception is a type of runtime error 
that disrupts the normal flow of a program. And that can be something like dividing by zero or something like referencing a memory address that doesn't exist. Shout out to, you know, old days of doing programming in C where that sort of thing seemed to happen all the time. So there you have it. Oh, thank you. Okay, so now that we have set the definitions, let's get into the main course, error handling and open telemetry. So as Adrian just mentioned, languages have their own ideas about what constitutes errors and exceptions as well as how to handle them. So how exactly does open telemetry deal with all these conceptual differences from language to language? This is where the OTEL specification, or spec for short, comes in. The spec provides a blueprint for developers who are working on various parts of the project. It standardizes implementation across the different languages. And since language APIs um, and SDKs are implementations of the spec, there are general rules against implementing something that isn't covered in the spec. Um, this is to help provide a guiding principle for organizing contributions to the project. In practice, though, there are a few exceptions. So for example, um, a language might prototype a new feature um, as part of adding it to the spec, um, usually designated as um, alpha or experimental before the verbiage is added to the spec. As another example, the spec allows for some degree of flexibility for a language to implement something as naturally to that language as possible. So for example, most languages have implemented record exception, uh, and since Go does not have the conventional concept of exceptions, it has instead rep, uh, implemented record error, which essentially does the same thing, and we'll talk a little bit more about that in a little bit. So now that we have a unified framework for how to handle all errors, let's see what options OpenTelemet provides for us. So first of all, we can record errors using either spans or logs. In open telemetry, a span represents, individual, uh, re represents an individual unit of work within a distributed system. For example, an HTTP call or a database call. And they, can, uh, they then make up the building blocks of a distributed trace. Spans are related to each other and to a trace through something called context. Context is the glue that holds, uh, sorry, that turns a pack of data into a unified trace, and we like to thank Hazel Weekly for that awesome definition. Context propagation allows us to pass information across multiple apps or systems and tie them together. We can learn all sorts of things um, through traces about our systems, such as how our services are connected and talking to each other, um, as well as what occurred in our application at a given time. Open telemetry enhances spans in several ways. One of the ways with which you can enhance our spans is through metadata or attributes in the form of key value pairs. So when you attach relevant information such as user IDs or request parameters, you can gain deeper insights into what occurred within a given trace. Spans also have a, a field of span kind, which is additional information that can provide developers with further context for troubleshooting. Span kind is determined automatically by the instrumentation libraries that you use. Open Solution defines several span kinds, each of which has unique implications for error reporting. We have client, which is for outgoing synchronous remote calls, such as outgoing HTTP calls. Server, which represents incoming synchronous call remote calls. And then internal spans represent operations that don't cross process boundaries. And finally, we have producer and consumer, which are typically used for message queue operations. Spans can be further enhanced with something called a span status, as well as a description of that status. Um, for example, here we have an exception message, message that was captured along with a status. By default, a span status is marked as unset, unless otherwise specified. You could also set it to error or as okay. And finally, we can enhance spans with something called span events. A span event is a structured log message embedded within the span on which it occurred. Span events can help um, enhance spans by providing uh, descriptive information, 
And you can also capture additional information on the span event by using custom attributes. When a span status is set to error, a span event is created automatically that captures a span's error message in Stacktrace. Earlier, we mentioned a method called record exception. Since Go doesn't support the conventional concept of uh, exceptions, it is implemented instead as record error. However, with both of these methods, you have to make an additional call to set the span status to error if that is what it should be, because it's not autom automatically going to be set to that. So this means that you can actually use span events to record additional information on that span event. Um, so by decoupling the span status from being automatically set to error when a span exception occurs, you can support the use case where you have an exception of, um, that has a span status of okay or inset. And this allows the most flexibility for instrumentation authors as well as end users. We can also record errors using logs with OpenTelemetry. In OpenTelemetry, a log is a structured message emitted by a service or some other component. They include a message, a timestamp, as well as a severity level. And severity levels um, represent the type of message that's being emitted. So debug, info, warning, error, or critical. OpenTelemetry allows for the correlation of logs to traces in which a message, a log message, can be associated to a span within a trace via trace context correlation, which we talked about earlier. So if you spot a log with a log level of error or critical, you can navigate to the corresponding trace to find out more information about what happened. And if your backend UI allows it, you can also navigate to the log from the trace UI. So is there is one better than the other for recording errors, um, spans, or logs? The answer <laughs> is everyone's favorite. It depends. Um, perhaps your team primarily uses logs. Perhaps they primarily use traces. Um, another thing to consider is you, the backend that you're using. Does it render both logs and traces? Does it support trace and log correlation? And how easily queryable or discoverable are your is your data. So if you've been using a proprietary agent to monitor your applications and have migrated over to OpenTelemetry, you might have noticed that an error that was captured by OpenTelemetry instrumentation is expressed a little bit differently than the same error captured by the proprietary agent's instrumentation. This is mainly due to the fact that OpenTelemetry simply models errors differently than how vendors might have been doing. For example, vendors have their own notion of what represents a logical unit of work within an application or system. Um, you're probably familiar with the term transaction, which can mean something slightly different from vendor to vendor. And in open telemetry, this is represented by a trace, which is made up of spans. So already, um, vendors have had to adjust how this data is populated in their UI because it is a different data model. And finally, we have span kind, which impacts, which has a bill, um, possibility to impact your error reporting. Um, some backends might have opinions on whether a, uh, oh, sorry, might have opinions on like only server and consumer span kinds should be counted to an error rate and not internal errors, for um, for example. And in a second here, Adriana is actually going to. Uh, Take us through a little demo, and that's we're gonna where we're gonna demonstrate kind of like some of these differences you can see from vendor to vendor. Um, in Jaeger, oh, another thing to consider too is some backends might have created a different uh, signal type for span events. Um, in Jaeger, they're represented as logs because that's basically what they are. Um, so we'll show you an example of this in just a little bit. Demo time. So um, we are going to do a demo. It is not a live demo because, in my experience, anytime there are live demos, bad things happen. So it's a pre recorded demo. You still get to hear my lovely voice as I live explain the pre recorded demo. Okay. 
So we have a demo application written in Python. There is a client and there is a server. It's a simple application. The client makes a request to a roll dice endpoint on the server. It's a Flask application. The server rolls a virtual die, i.e. it outputs a number between one and six and outputs it to standard out. Now, as I mentioned, there is a client and a server portion to this application. However, the client's not so interesting. We'll be looking at the server code. And here are the notable parts. So here we have the roll dice endpoint. And this part here basically calls another function called do roll, which actually does the work. And then we have this section at the bottom, which does the initialization for our application. It initializes our Flask application. It initializes our traces and our metrics. Now, this application has been instrumented with open telemetry using auto and manual instrumentation. We are adding some logs for the purposes of demoing all this good stuff. And for funsies, we're also capturing a metric. Now, inside the do role function, we are creating a span called do role. You can call it Bob for all I care, it does not matter, but it should be a name that's meaningful to you. Now, in our span, we are doing a few things. We are creating an attribute. We are also creating a span event, and that span event has attributes of its own. We are also creating a log message. It's an info message. Um, we are creating logs using the Python Logs Bridge API, aided by Py Python auto instrumentation. Um, which means it does magical things. Because we are embedding our log within our uh, span definition, it means that the log gets automatically correlated to the span. And then finally, we have the, um, our one metric. It is a counter uh, instrument, and this counter gets incremented by one every single time this function is called. Now, this is an errors talk, so we should be throwing an error at some point. I have forced an error basically every time a die roll is divisible by two, it will throw an exception, and this exception is caught in the roll dice function. Now, within the roll dice function, um, if, when, if the exception is caught, then we create a brand new trace, and this trace, we're saying, okay, we're capturing the exception. Um, by using record exception. Now, record exception is basically a span event, but it embeds the stack trace as part of it. And also, just for funsies, I'm also creating a log message here, and it is an error. Uh, the log level is error. So here is the video of the demo. Now, this repo is publicly available, and we'll include a link to the repo at the end of this talk. Um, this is available on GitHub. I've made it available through GitHub Code Spaces, so you don't have to set up a local environment to test this thing out. Um, so hopefully it'll set, save you some headaches if you want to play around. So here we go. So first, we are opening things up in GitHub Code Spaces, and it takes a couple minutes to start up. I sped things up so you don't get bored. Um, the other thing is um, the OTEL collector config for sending stuff to the observability backends. I put it in this OTEL call config extras file, which I've git ignored because it's got some, um, some keys to access the observability backends, which I do not want in GitHub, so that's been added separately. Next, we are building the Docker images for the Python client and server. We'll be running this thing using Docker Compose in a minute once the images are built. Little hamster is going. And it's almost done. Okay, now it's done. We are going to run Docker Compose. So this thing is going to start our Python client, server, the OTEL collector, and Jaeger. And we can see that it's running here. Um, now, Jaeger is automatically ex exposed um, through port 16686 in GitHub code spaces, and if we go over to the ports tab and click on the little globe thingy, um, then we can open up Jaeger in GitHub code spaces, and we can take a look at our traces. And as you can see, we have some traces that contain errors represented by the big red dots and the ones that do not contain errors, which are represented by the little green dots. So if we go to a non-error one, we can see our trace with four spans and we've got our do roll uh, span and it's got our uh, span event 
and the, uh, with the message and the two attributes. Then going to our error trace, you can see that our span, we have the one span with the error, it's marked in red, um, and it's got our usual span event, but also because it threw an error, it's also capturing the stack trace um, as a new span event, automatically captured. And because it's throwing an exception, that extra span that we created shows up there as well. And if we click on that, we should be able to see our span event that we created that captures the stack trace as well. Obviously, this is overkill. We don't need both of them, but it was just for the purposes of demonstrating this. Now we're opening up a different observability backend. And as you can see, um, similar interpretation looks slightly different. The red triangles represent the errors, uh, the, the traces with the error spans, and the, the green dots represent the traces with the non-error spans. So similar thing, we can see that um, all is good. Um, we see our span event with our message and our attributes, but we can also see our log message that we added in because this backend supports, um, supports logs and that the log is actually correlated to this particular span. And if we click on the log, we can see the log message, and we can see it also in, within the context of other log messages that belong to the same trace. So we have that correlation. Now we look at, an, uh, at one of the error spans, and clicking on that, we can see the do rule um, incurred an error, so it's got, it's showing up as red, we have our additional span event with the stack trace, which we expected. And again, we should see our same log message. And because it was an info message, we don't expect it to look you know, scary and red. Um, but we can see, again, there's the correlation to the, the overall trace. And we also see our even number span that was created because we incurred that error, which has our exception message and also our log message, which we didn't see in Jaeger, right? Because Jaeger doesn't support um, logs. So if we click on this log, then we will be able to see the log message in a minute, um, which because it was an error, it shows up in red. And again, we can see it in the context of other log messages that were part of the same trace. So um, now Reese is going to show you what that looks like in a different, in, in yet another observability backend, just to give you an idea of, um, you know, it, it's kind of interesting to see how, how different products um, interpret things in different ways. Yeah, and I think it's really valuable for end users to kind of understand and get a look at how they are represented differently. Um, so this is an example of um, how traces might be visualized. So here we've got a group of traces, which we can see easily which one of them had errors. And from there, we can click into one of the traces with an error and look for the span that has the error. And from there, we can see metadata about the span. In this case, the span status code, the status code description, as well as the fact that there was a span event captured. When we click into the span event, um, which you can see here is referenced as a span events um, versus a log as it was in Jaeger. Sorry, I clicked too fast and I don't know how to go back. Um, but also we're running out of time, so I gotta go. Um, this backend has created a new signal type for span events called span events. Um, and so in Jaeger, it was represented as a log. Here it's represented as a span event. And you can also navigate to the associated logs and vice versa because this backend supports trace and logs correlation. Yep, and there you have it. I believe we have one minute to wrap up. So error handling is challenge. Open Solimetry provides a, an open standard blueprint for how to handle these errors as well as providing different ways for us to record errors through spans logs, and it supports correlation. You can enhance spans with metadata, uh, span status, span kind, and a couple other different ways that we covered. And how your data is visualized in your backend may be a little bit different than how you ha may have been used to by using a proprietary agent instrumentation, simply because OpenTelemetry models errors differently than how vendors have been doing. Not all images are created by humans, um, Dali, but honestly, Adriana is an amazing prompt engineer and did all the penguin images. It was fun. <laughs>
and we have some handy QR codes for you to check out. Yeah, I, I have a podcast called Geeking Out, and I've had guests like Kelsey Hightower and Charity Majors and Reese, so you should totally check it out. Um, also, come see us in the Hotel Observatory at KubeCon starting tomorrow. We've got some really cool stuff going on, um, including end user feedback sessions. So please, if you have any feedback on open telemetry, sign up for one of the feedback sessions. We would love to hear from you. And come join us on Thursday for a party that we're hosting with our friends Docker, Plumi, and Tailscale. And we also have some handy links here um, to reference from the slide from our talk today. Thank you so much. <laughs>